the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we pause this day to place time before God our Father, to bring the past week before him, to give thanks for the blessings we've received, but also to bring those things which weigh heavy in our hearts. We come here too to place the week ahead of us, that God may guide us, sustain us, and help us in all the endeavours that we have to face. As then, as we come and place our lusts before God our Father, first we seek his forgiveness, his mercy, that great gift which lifts us up from this world and sets us on the path of glory. Lord, you were born from the Virgin Mary for the salvation of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you died on the cross to heal the wounds of sin. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you rose from the dead to open for us the gates of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. O God, who manifest your mighty power above all pardoning and show mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, You object, O house of Israel. You say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is my way unfair? Is not your way that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life, because they considered and turned away. From all transgressions that they have committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember, Remember your mercies, O Lord. Make me to know your paths, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. Remember, Remember your mercies, O Lord. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. For they have been from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Remember, remember me. Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. And leads the humble in what is right. And teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, then make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but empty himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. This feels strange. This last week in Plymouth should have seen big celebrations the commemorating of the 400th anniversary of the sailing of the Mayflower. The unveiling of the new statue on the Ho doesn't quite live up to the celebrations which were planned. Now, I'm sufficiently old and sufficiently Plymouthian, I can remember taking part in the celebrations of the 350th anniversary. I had to dress up in what was considered a sort of pilgrim costume and dance around the streets of the barber with other children from my school. It was a great day. Thousands of people were on the streets, waving, shouting and cheering. We were cheering and smiling as we danced along and paraded past them in our costumes. The music was played loudly and there was a huge feeling of excitement and celebration. And when we see parades on the TV today or we go to experience them for ourselves, parades are special occasions. 
In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus calls our attention to another bait, but a rather strange one. It's making its way into the kingdom of heaven through the front gates. The angels are there, ready to welcome the new arrivals. But the head of this parade, in the place of honour, aren't the people you might expect. There's some very unlikely candidates. Thieves, tax collectors, the people who'd sold out their own people by collecting taxes to the occupying forces, prostitutes, and other very unsavoury characters who we'd never expect Jesus or anyone like him to associate with. But at the start of his public ministry, Jesus demands that people repent. So this message comes as no surprise to the tax collectors, the prostitutes, or at least some of them. They know that what they've been doing was wrong. And they're relieved waiting for them beyond their disaster is the hope of something different. Because once the word is out, they do start marching towards the kingdom. The problem cases are those of us that, that believe that the demand for a change of heart isn't our problem. It's something that's meant for someone else. We might think we've got the morality thing down to pat. Perhaps we do. But it's a sad state indeed if we prefer the self-satisfaction of sitting in an armchair feeling righteous rather than getting up and walking with tax collectors in the parade that moves through heaven's gates. And unfortunately, many of the people in Jesus' audience when he was telling his story of the two sons were so sure of their own standing before God that they couldn't see that they were in any way at fault. They thought their lives were so good, they had no need of repentance, and couldn't accept that this new man on the block, Jesus, could possibly have any authority over them. More often, we get a bit confused about authority. We think it might be based on our credentials and our expertise. A long and glowing CV years of education, our successes, our accomplishments, our status and our reputation in the community, the positions that we hold in relationships to each other. We assume that authority comes from outside a person and is given to them by their circumstances. So, some have authority and others do not. As a teacher, sometimes I hear, well, what gives you the right to tell me what to do? And sometimes, even as grown-ups, we think like that. It represents our way of understanding. Sometimes we have authority issues. We might get suspicious of someone telling us what to do, correcting us. The chief priests and elders say to Jesus in the bit before today's passage, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? We see it in the reaction of the two sons when they're asked to go to the vineyard. One initially refuses, but eventually does what his father has asked. The other says, yes, dad, I'll do it, but doesn't carry out the instructions. Every day, God authorises us to enter and sends us into his vineyard to act in this world with his authority and on his behalf through the gifts he has bestowed on each one of us. True authority always comes from within. An interior God-given quality, not an external circumstance. And that's what the chief priests and elders failed to understand. They chose to exchange their God-given authority for human power. And sometimes we do, too. And that's what's happening in much of our world today. Where there's an absence of true authority, there will often be power struggles. A leader can exercise power, but exercising authority can be a different thing. In exercising power, you look for your own interests, your own gain. But in exercising authority, 
charity. You look for the interests and welfare of others. A good leader doesn't dominate or control. They inspire. They care more about others than they do about themselves. They call forth faith, hope and trust from their followers. They expand the world, open new possibilities and bring forth life and gifts in people that they never knew were there. They cause others to reevaluate their lives, change their minds, repent, live differently. Doesn't that sound very much like Jesus? As individuals, we may have leadership positions, we may not. We may have exalted titles, we may not. We may have qualifications, we may not. But whatever our status, we can still exercise that authority. I see it in people around me, people here, in the way they show compassion and gentleness for others. I hear it in the way people pray. I feel it in the love they show for me and for other people. And they've shown me the way to the vineyard in my life. It's what people with authority do. God shares his authority with us. And the, God, the authority God shares is nothing less than what he is like himself. It's the expression of God's life in and through our own. And he gives generously extravagantly and he shared and we all have that gift from him because there's no one without authority the difference is isn't that some people have it and some people don't the difference is that some recognize it and exercise it and others do not regardless god knows and sees the authority he has given us and waits for us to see and know it too. And when we do, we're like that son. We change our mind and we go into the vineyard. So, if no one is without authority, we have to ask ourselves, what is the authority that God has given us as a church, as individuals? What gifts, what attributes has God bestowed on us? And we living from that authority, sharing those gifts in our parish, in our wider community, have we fully answered God's call and gone out into the vineyard? In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Along with our brothers and sisters throughout the world, let me ask you the faith that we hold, how it lives its life within us. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son of Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary? He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, ascended to the dead. The third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. With our faith before us, let us then continue to offer our prayers. We pray at this time as the virus amongst us begins to grow once more. For all those who are placing their lives in the hands of others to serve others in our health services, social care and social services. All who reach out to their neighbour in need. We pray 
themselves at risk of the virus to help and to bring comfort and healing. We pray for all who are seeking ways of bringing this virus to an end, those in our scientific world, those seeking vaccines, those seeking medicines to bring relief. We pray for all around our world who live not just with threat of disease, but in the conflicts that continue. No longer in the news, but still at danger day by day. For the peoples in the Yemen. We pray for all who are isolated from their own countries, for those seeking refuge and safety. We pray for our communities in which we live, for those whom we share our daily lives, our families, our friends, those whom we share words of comfort and hope with, those we listen to. We pray for those we know struggling, for all on our parish sick list, those who are ill, injured, in sorrow or afraid. We pray to in hope and uncertainty, for those who have departed this life, for Father Gordon Rummy, those whom we love but yet see no more. And pray through Christ's love and mercy, we may be gathered into that heavenly land. And so, alongside our brothers and sisters in this place, we offer those particular things we bring in our own hearts to God our Father as we pray in confidence in the power of the Most Holy Spirit. Hear us, Lord, as we lift up our prayers to you in faith. Read our hearts well and answer these prayers and the prayers of all your people. In ways we know and in ways we cannot understand, we call upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We are the body of Christ and the one Spirit. We are baptized into one body. Let us then pursue everything that makes for peace and build up our life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. Grant, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, to give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself. So that the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and gave you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, one with resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are not by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary of the Cross, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants, Jonathan, Robert, and our bishops, your clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased to at their passing from this life, give kindness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen.
in the presence of Christ. Let us call together upon our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be here. Body of Christ. Amen.
So let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, and those whose suffering we are united, wherever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You're staying at home now, would you like to sit down and join them? <laughs> Please sit down. There we are. I have to confess, I feel very strange today. I've been, I've been messing up once or twice all the way through. Just simple stuff, forgetting to turn on microphones, forgetting where I was at halfway through the service, I'll be quite honest with you. I thought, what do I do now? And I realised we're the Queen, um, the Glorious. A bit, sometimes it can be very um, strange. And I'd say, I'm finding it's a bit strange at the moment. Again, we're on the receiving end of constant sort of updates on how we should do things. I don't know how it's working on the railways and stuff, but we've now got new regulations coming in uh, about what we do. So far we are untouched. It occurred to me that if you want midnight mass at Christmas, and that's off, <laughs> got to be home by 10, tucked up, ready for Santa. Um, but uh, and again, we are we're carrying on as we are. Uh, I know that funerals are being uh, curtailed a little bit. Uh, and weddings um, that we have uh, planned are being changed. Baptisms too. You'll notice that we are having baptisms and uh, uh, they begin in two weeks' time, but they'll be on Thursday night, not on Sunday. Because we have, again, it's, remember I spoke so long ago about this, all about hygiene, uh, that we need to be clear of the church and have a certain amount of time. The church is cleaned on Thursday after Thursday morning. We can use it Thursday evening and it has two days to, be, to recover before you get in. So, um, it's all sort of very strange, odd ways that we're doing things. But as I say, at the moment, uh, we can carry on as we are, which is very good. And uh, I commend you all for everything to do. But as far as I'm aware, I mention this each week with great joy, the, the APCM, the annual meeting, still will be going ahead uh, as, we, as we expect it to. We just watch this space, don't we? Um, but I think more than anything else, we have quite a, uh, a serious task ahead of us over the next month, which is more important than sort of keeping this place running and about them together. We've got some serious praying to do. Um, we've got some serious reaction to do. And I love, I'm sorry, I, I put Catherine on a pedestal today because I wanted you to see her really well and hear what she was saying about this uh, extraordinary challenge of Jesus, given the example of the two brothers and the way that they responded in different ways or didn't, the way that they react and how we respond to them in the way that we think they react and are we to judge and so forth. It's a very moral time of year we've got at the moment and our task at the moment as the church is to pray for people and love them uh, and uh, in whichever way we can. And I feel quite um, disempowered. I was unable to say this before because when we were locked down, you're all at home. You can see your faces. It's, uh, you might feel quite a disempowering feeling coming up. We want to help and we can't because of the limitations. So, but we need to pray for those in need. Pray for all who are struggling um, and pray for people's hearts, which will be challenged and heavy at this time. Okay? Um, it's very important. You can't do much better than that. That is the really important part. Okay, uh, on a very practical note, and I'm astounded at my own technical proficiency, we are registered with NHS Test, Test and Trace already. On the very morning the app came out, the, the thing came out, we were registered. How about that? I was on the ball that day. It's pretty idiot proof to register it. I understand it's not quite so easy to use it. Um, <laughs> we're just letting you know at home and here. You go out, you're seeing all these QC things. They're on the back of your shit as well. They're on the walls. So if you get your smartphone when you come in, and you can click on that and register if you come in, as well as giving your name uh, as well for our test and trace. So there we are. Wow, how cool is that? There we are. Some astronomy is so up to date, I can hardly cope. There we go. But that's all part of our caring for the world and caring for those in need.
time to send you out into that world. I'll stay in touch, folks. Tune in week by week. If you haven't got me on email, you haven't got, I haven't got your email, and I'm looking around at one or two faces, please give me your email so that you can keep up in touch with the constant stuff that's coming out. Um, we reached, would you believe, on Thursday, we reached, are you ready for this? Our 100th broadcast on Thursday night. This is the 101st broadcast since March. Wow! I suspect we might hit 200, but let's see how we got on. We're 101 broadcast from here, from the grounds, uh, all the way through. So how about that? There you go. We're really up with it, folks, aren't we? Uh, yes, <laughs> we are. We are up with it. Right, let's send you out to the world. Would you stand, please? The Lord be with you. May Christ grant you holiness to follow him in faith, hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and the message of an angel, so by his cross and resurrection, we may be brought to the glory of passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. 